everybody ha and happy holidays. I'm Debbie Weiss, a playwright here in Boston, Massachusetts. I recently updated a short play, a uh, holiday play uh, I wrote uh, about 10 years ago uh, for our current day. And this new play is called Nightmare Before Christmas. It's being performed as a reading on Zoom by the Bagel Bards players. And we hope you'll enjoy it. I'm gonna just set the scene now. Nightmare Before Christmas. Scene, Santa's Castle and Workshop. The North Pole. December 20, 2020. At Lights Up, Jones, a White House staffer, stands socially distanced with Santa Claus in a festively decorated parlor. The staffer in a dark business suit and wearing a face mask and White House insignia, with White House insignia, and sunglasses, has a briefcase in one hand. Santa wears festive holiday attire, though not necessarily his famous red suit, and a coordinating face mask. A large calendar may be seen to show there are only five days left until Christmas. You mind if uh, I take off this uh, mask? It's all right taking these things off. Uh, Dr. Fauci said you were immune to the uh, coronavirus. I told to say I had Santa antibodies so the children wouldn't be worried about Christmas this year. There's enough to worry about. Essentially, it's true. You tested negative upon your arrival, so feel free to take your mask off. Well, thanks. That feels much better. It's truly nice to have immunity. Living up here has given us strong constitutions, and we are naturally insulated from any diseases. Most importantly, we've all been vaccinated. Still, to be prudent, we continue with this, uh, uh, take the normal recommend, recommended precautions. I've been enjoying wearing these seasonal masks our, our product development department keeps coming up with. We're coordinating them with uh, holiday sweaters, you know, like this one. <laughs> yes, yes, uh, very nice. Um, wait a minute, you, you got the coronavirus vaccine up here? I mean, how'd you wangle that? I mean, not even the White House has gotten that, has got its allotment. Who is more essential than we are this time of year? Pfizer sent us the first shipment after it was approved and production fast track in the UK. We also have no problem storing the vaccine at super cold temperatures up here. Yeah, it's freezing up here. I don't know how you manage. <laughs> the cold suits is just fine. It's invigorating, actually. Doesn't suit me. Well, I hope I don't catch a cold. That would be a shame. Although if you think it's cold now, you should have been here before global warming. <laughs> yeah, it's freezing here. I don't know how you manage. I just hope I don't catch a cold. Uh, who said global warming was all bad? <laughs> but you didn't come here all the way to chat about climate at the North Pole, did you, Mr. Jones? I suppose my visit must be a surprise. To put it mildly, we don't get many visitors up here. I bet uh, the inclement weather and remote location must keep away a lot of unwanted guests. Not as much as one would think. Well, I wish I could say it's a pleasure trip, uh, but I've been sent here by the highest authorities for a mission of the utmost importance. You've been sent by Mother Nature? I was just talking to her the other day, and she didn't, uh... A higher authority. God? No higher. The U.S. president. I don't understand. Well, it's all become quite clear that we've had a chance to discuss the situation. It will become quite clear. What situation? Why don't we sit down? Oh, of course, of course. Please, have a seat. I have to say, Santa... You've got quite an operation up here. Uh, th thank you. Uh, do you mind? I'm sorry. Uh, would you like one? Uh, uh, they're Supremos from Little Havana. No, no, thank you. We don't, we don't allow smoking here. <laughs> I thought you smoked a pipe. I did, but a while ago when some of the elves developed asthma and the reindeer started to cough and wheeze, we're a completely smoke-free environment now. Well, I'll save it for later.
Sorry to interrupt Santa, but we have an emergency on one of our production lines. Just oh, look at this. Oh, I see Emil has gotten one, gotten creative again. How to love his enthusiasm. Just make a small run. There's always someone who'll want it. And go on to the next design. All right, Santa. Although I think you are being overly indulgent of his whimsy. <laughs> Interesting what's considered emergency up here. Ah, yes, I've, I've got a real, you've got a real nice setup here. Don't think we haven't noticed. What have you noticed? Let's just say that it is our job in the White House to notice everything. Hmm. And you don't even pay taxes. We've always enjoyed a special status where it was where that was concerned. And since the term was coined, we've been officially classified as not profit. Free land. No taxes. Complete autonomy. Sounds like you had yourself one sweet deal, Santa. Well, I... Uh, uh, hmm. You shouldn't be embarrassed. Nope. If anyone is able to appreciate the entrepreneurial spirit, it's the good old U.S. of A. Mr. Jones, I'm sure I don't need to point out that Christmas is less than a week away. I have a great deal to do and would really like to get back to work. Why don't you come by after New Year's when things won't be so hectic? No can do, Santa. It's because of Christmas I'm here. Oh? Don't tell me there's a more special request from the White House. This really is getting out of hand. No other administration has made as many demands. But never in the history of the United States has it been an administration like this one. Everything about it is unprecedented. It's worked harder and achieved more than any government administration, American or otherwise. And if you've gotten any impression, it's because of the lame stream media that's been trying to tear down the president since even before the time he came into office. So why have you come exactly? Because whatever it is, you should have just gone through the normal channels of communications, unless there's a problem with the White House hotline or the president's Twitter account has been taken down again. It was felt a more direct approach was necessary given the delicacy of the matter. Regarding? Regarding the presidential wish list. His wish list was especially long this year. He wanted 25,000 extra votes for Wisconsin, 15,000 for Georgia, and 85,000 for Pennsylvania, for starters. By contrast, his letter to me was extremely brief. I've seen longer tweets from him. Makes me wonder about his sincerity. Oh, the president's sincere. She's just been very busy. He's responsible for running the greatest world power, after all. A fact that never ceases to amaze me. It's the president who never ceases to amaze. Just that we're dis so dismayed and outraged about the election results. It's obvious there must have been a fraud. How else could he have possibly lost? Well, up here we make a point of keeping everything apolitical. That's either foolishly idealistic or just plain naive. Everything is political. You should have saved yourself the trip. I've already told the president I can't deliver his reelection on gold platter tied up with a bow. The votes have been certified and the Electoral College has voted. The Supreme Court has even declined to hear, uh, hear any of the cases and I can't give him an unconstitutional universal pardon either. So he can stop hounding me about that too. This is not the answer we wanted to hear. Sorry, but that's the only answer I can give. And actually, the president better watch out. He better not cry. He better not pout. I'm off to tell you why. Because I'm making a list and I'm checking it twice. I know who's been naughty and I know who's been nice. I see the president when he's sleeping. I know when he's awake, golfing and tweeting. So he better start being good, for goodness sake, if he wants anything at all for, from his wish list. So you want to play hardball, do you, Santa, with the president? 
I don't think you'd want to do that. Your Santa land could easily lose its favorable status and uh, be deemed a rogue nation threatening global security. That would be a lie. The line separating truth from lies is so broadly these days. Does it matter anyway, as long as everyone believes it's true? Let me share with you what we've gleaned from our observations of the North Pole and watching hours of Christmas specials. You fly unrestricted through international airspace. You distribute all sorts of packages that haven't been inspected. Your elves are undocumented. You're undocumented workers. You have an unregistered sleigh. And the reindeer, don't let me get started on them, sounds like the makings of an extremely dangerous situation to me. You're distorting everything. There's nothing malicious or dangerous in any of that. People won't believe this, not of Santa. Won't they? Just look what people are made to believe on social media groups like Canon, Canon, let alone the president's incessant ranting and tweeting People believed Hillary operated a ring of pedophiles out of a DC pizza parlor. Now just imagine what they'll think of you as kids. Sit on your lap all day long. We <laughs> really could get behind that bad Santa movement and destroy your reputation. You'd be finished, washed up, kaput. You wouldn't. You couldn't. We would. And we could. And we can bother you up with all sorts of regulations and protocols so fast it'd make your head spin. We could shut you down for good. It's all up to you. At the North Pole, we've always operated freely and independently. And all this freedom and independence, that is the root of the problem. We've never been subject to outside laws or government. That could all change. But that's not in my power. You underestimate yourself, Santa. We've seen those lifetime films and the endless Hallmark specials with all the Christmas miracles. We just want one of those. We'd also like everyone who voted against the president to get a lump of coal. Yes, coal. A lump of beautiful, clean coal, of course. Look, Santa, don't get your Santa pants into a twist. This can be a win-all for all concerned. The president is a very successful businessman, and he's been giving a lot of thought to your operations. We know about your problems competing with Walmart and Amazon. Well, we can provide assistance with economic development funds. We can also help your Santa land enterprise do an IPO that would then lead to an LBO that could be extremely financially advantage. So if you can't come through with the election or pardon a significant portion of Santa land stock with an option to buy you out down the road would just be fine instead. With global warming, this area will make a fabulous golf course and resort in the not too distant future. In the meantime, we'll open a Santa line, Santa land theme park. The elves can lead tours of the factory and people can take rides on the flying reindeer. Just imagine, though I don't think you want to cross the president. If it happened, two others have tried. Well, it looks like he got me by the short hairs of my beard. Come on, Santa. This could be the start of a beautiful partnership. Oh, since I'm here, I hope you don't mind. Uh, I thought I'd let you know that a few other things that I wanted for Santa Christmas. Now, where's that jolly old Santa we know and love? How about a big Santa belly laugh? Santa, you have to see this. Emil has really gone overboard this time. Even you have to admit that this one's a candidate for the Isle of Misfit Toys and Ugly Sweaters. Uh, 
wardrobe change. <laughs> oh, for goodness sake. It was all a bad dream. Or was it? Curtain and play. We hope you enjoyed our presentation on Zoom, our reading of Nightmare Before Christmas, presented by the Bagel Bards players, who will now introduce themselves and the roles they played. Steve Glein, Santa Claus. Uh, Doug Holder, a White House operative, very in character for me. <laughs> Richard Oxenberg, the elf. <laughs> And I'm Debbie Weiss, the playwright, um, and I want to thank you all for joining us for this presentation. We certainly hope you enjoyed it. And we, from our homes to yours, we wish you all a very happy and safe holiday season. Thank you so much. <laughs>